This is the Bamboo X1C, and this is the Elegoo Centauri. One is $1,200, the other is three. But the real reason you're watching this video is which one is worth your money. Feature for feature, print for print, is the Bamboo worth four times the price? Let's take a look. So first, let's take a look at the features of these printers, and then we'll look at some of the prints I printed with these machines. I printed ABS, ASA, PETG, and PLA. So let's take a closer look. So build plate, pretty simple. Double-sided plate, we have an A side and a B side. One's smooth, one's textured. I mostly run the texture plates in the bamboo. Um, I, I'm assuming they still come with these dual-sided plates as well, but I usually just run these gold sheets. I have great adhesion with these. If you don't need a smooth side, perfect. All right, moving into the printer, my first big complaint is this pathetic little light. So let's turn it on. It hardly does anything. Um, the bamboo's light could also be a little brighter, but it's actually usable. So you'd see in there when it's closed, versus this one, it's quite hard to see in here, and my shop is relatively bright, and when it's over here, I'll be like over there working or something, and I can look into the bamboo from across the room and make sure everything's going well, but this one, being it's a new printer, I don't really trust it yet. I, I take this little flashlight and shine it in here just to take a peek at the print because I just can't really see in there very well, especially if I'm printing something like black. So first big complaint is the light sucks, especially since an LED strips are super cheap. I'd rather the printer be $305 and have a better light than this sad little thing in here, but not, not a huge deal. It, it's just kind of bad. And then both these printers do have a camera. I would say they're comparable in quality. I don't need super high definition cameras anyways, because I'm pretty much just opening up the app or whatever, making sure my print is fine, and that's it. I'm not really recording or doing anything crazy with them. So as long as I can see it relatively clear, good enough. And then you can see the bed here is three points of contact. Same with the bamboo. This all looks quite similar. And then he, on this machine, the fan is back here. At first when I looked at it, I'm like, oh, there's no auxiliary fan, but there is right here versus the bamboos is on the side. How much that affects anything, I'm not really sure at this point. It does seem that the bamboo prints overhangs a little bit better. And then this printer does have a poop shoot like the bamboo. I'm assuming they're coming out with multi color. You almost have to at this point. They don't have it available yet, but you can see back here, it's on the right side. Over here, it's kind of on the left, not that that really matters. And then coming to the back, poop shoot, poop shoot. So when, I don't know, but they're for sure gonna come out with multicolor, that's my assumption. So when this got delivered, I did have one issue with it. The little magnet that's embedded here was not attached. So when I opened the door, the magnet would come with it. But I just added a little bit of super glue and now it's stuck back in there and everything's fine. The door also has like a slow open, so you can Uncle Jesse it. This one too, same, both doors have a nice feel. Nice little handle, nice little handle. And as for aesthetically, I think both these printers look great. I think this printer looks like a Creality printer and a bamboo had a baby and like it's all solid, nice metal, glass everywhere. I think aesthetically, great. Like construction wise, seems made pretty well. Same with the bamboo, tried and true. Nice aluminum body, looks like a Apple product. And then as for the displays, I think they're quite similar. I would say this one mirrors a little bit closer to like a Creality type product, but it's, the touch is fine. Everything works good, nice and easy to navigate. No problems here. I think it's nice and clear. Nice size display. So displays, equal. Uh, another gripe people might have with the Bamboo is you have to use that micro SD card, but Bamboo kind of locks you into their system and interface, so most people probably are sending their files over Wi-Fi and not actually using a physical USB stick. If a USB stick is your way to go, they have the USB stick right here in the front, which is a great location. It should be right in the front, easy to access, and they did that here. Another feature I'm very happy about, which I hope all companies start doing this, 
It's on the side. It's not on the back. The Bamboos is on the back, but I run an AMS, so it's kind of irrelevant, but I do love this option, especially if you're running like a print farm or something, and these are all in your racking and against the wall. This is so easy to just swap in and out versus reaching back here and trying to like finagle that filament into that tube. Great job in putting it on the side. Finally, these manufacturers are starting to listen to the users and putting it on the side. And as for power switch, which might not be a big deal, but again, you want it as convenient as possible. You reach around the back and it's right here. And thankfully, they have it switched this way. Like the other kitty printers, they had this backwards, so you had to like reach around this plug. But this is pretty easily accessible. The bamboo has a power switch on the back, but it also has this power button up here, which I do like. And then here's the flash forge. They have a power button right here. Some people don't even turn off the printers. I personally would like a power button somewhere here that's just easily accessible, but not a big deal, just personal preference. Okay, so these are both just magnet on. They're pretty simple. Same with this one. They just, you know, pop on. The inside here, they all look pretty similar. I don't love this design as it's hard to get these plugs back in here, which I'll show you later. The bamboos is relatively easy to change. I would say changing the nozzle is pretty comparable, minus the location of these plugs back here. Then bamboo has the infamous carbon rods and this machine has the metal rods. How much difference that actually makes, I don't know. And then belt size is pretty comparable. And then when printing with these machines, this machine does run a little louder. And I think it's just that fan. I don't know if it's because it's bigger or a little cheaper, but this fan is louder when it kicks on. Like noise wise comparison, I don't think it's drastic, but I wouldn't really want either machine next to my bed when I'm sleeping. But if it was in the next room, you wouldn't hear either machine going. I've had pretty good first layers. I'd show you a bed mesh, but I don't know how to do that. Usually you type the printer's IP address into a web browser and it'll pull up and you can see the bed mesh and all that stuff. But I couldn't find that on the Elugu when I did that. And I can't see it under the device in the Elugu slicer. So the bamboo, bamboo being bamboo, I don't even know how to show you a bed mesh with that thing because they kind of have everything like, you know, closed source and bamboo. So I don't know, but either way, first layers, I haven't really had any issues. I had a little bit of sticking problems with this one, but I raised the bed temp and everything was fine. For print speed, you're gonna get pretty comparable numbers. They, I compared them in the slicer. I didn't actually like stopwatch the prints, but via slicer specs, they're quite similar. Give or take a few minutes each print both ways. It's irrelevant. And speaking of slicers, uh, bamboo has a great slicer. I love the bamboo slicer and orca slicer. I think those are the best two out there in my opinion. This printer has the, I forgot what they call it. It's like the Elugu Studio or Slicer or whatever, but it's essentially a knockoff, a copy of Orca or the Bamboo Slicer. So the slicers are virtually pretty much identical. No complaints on the slicer. I send everything via Wi-Fi, both printers. No problems, they upload fast, no issues. And like this versus the Flash Forge, the Flash Forge is, that whole thing is plastic. This is glass and metal. Okay, so let's take a look at these prints. For a majority of the prints, I use the same exact roll, but some of them I just use two separate rolls so I can print at the same time. And I also tried to keep the print settings as basic as possible. The only thing I changed was bed temp and like print temp. So everything's pretty much stock. I also printed most of the stuff out of black because I figured that would be the easiest to see over the camera. All right, first problem, I think we had a clog. So this looks good, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And how I had it printed was like this, door cracked, top cracked. My shop is 59 degrees, so it's not that warm in here. So let's see if I can clear this clog and then I'll just print just the vase again to see what happens. A lot of times you get lucky with these little wire pokey things and shove it in there and then force some filament through and it usually clears it up. And you can hear that clicking, so we definitely have a clog. And here you can see the gears wearing out the filament here. And there you can see it's stuck in there, so I pulled this apart and put this in a wooden face device so you don't mess anything up. Then you just heat up this little piece of wire, stick it down in the clog, let that cool, and you should be able to pull that out with ease. And there you go, there's our clog. This whole thing took maybe 10 minutes pulling it all apart, but this is the part I don't like about this setup here. The first plug you can get in pretty easy, but that back one is just very small and I have these big fat fingers that I couldn't get that little tiny plug in there. So I had to use the pliers to actually plug that thing in. So my critique would be to move those plugs and put them somewhere else so they're easier to access. And then there we go, nice and clear. 
So first up, this is my design. See, some of the overhangs have a little bit of low out, but overall, texture on the nose and eyes is good. Nice and smooth. See a little bit of layer lines there. This was printed on the Bamboo A1 in color, obviously. See a little bit of layer line there. Must have had some, yep. There it is, some warping. That's what those lines are from. But overall, I'd say quality of the knits is pretty similar. And then here's another following print. I wanted to see how it handled the filament change, so I put an almost empty roll on there, and it handled it okay. You can, usually when there's a filament change like this, it cools and you can kind of see where it changes, whether it be color or like a cooling compression line, so I don't know if there's a way around that, but you could tell a little bit. Even on the bamboo, if it sits long enough, like you don't catch it right away, you can see that layer spool change line. Then here's the one that we had the filament change. As you can see a little bit there. There you can see where it started. But overall, not the worst, not the best. I wouldn't sell this. Then the drip tray. And there you can see the top layer could use a little bit more flow. But overall, good looking print. That is the Eleglue. And here we got the bamboo, nice and smooth. So just looking at these two, it's quite hard to tell who printed what. And here, the other side PLA, obviously the film, the roll change here, but they look pretty dang good. And then this is the Ella glue, this is the bamboo. See those inner walls. You can see the, the Ella glue has a little bit worse VFAs. There, there you can see the ripples. The bamboos don't look quite as bad. But again, we're like we're nitpicking here. These both look great. All right. We're off to a little bit of a rocky start. So this is my first time using plate side B, which is the smooth plate, because these pieces will get glued together. So I wanted them smooth. I'm assuming one of these just broke free, causing the spaghetti here. But luckily we don't have to reprint everything. Yeah, so this must have just broke free. Yeah, there's a smoosh line there. So definitely peeled up, but the prints look great. Um, this says heat, heat bed temp 30. I think I set it to 35 or 40 because 30 seemed pretty cool. So I'm gonna clean this, raise the bed temp a little more and run these couple pieces again. Old Faithful. Looking good. And here we go, we got the black and white Stormtrooper Lego man here. I printed all the white stuff on the Elegoo, and then I printed all the black and the other colored stuff with the bamboo. And you honestly can't really tell a difference here. It's hard to see the white, I know, but I made this for a gift for one of my friend's kids for his birthday, and he absolutely loved it. And it's just a smooth print overall. I got this file on Thangs, this is not my file. I still did have a little bit of warping with the Ella glue, so I'll, I'll again raid that, raise that bed temp a little more and, and play with that offset, or maybe even do like a bed leveling sequence, but overall it's been pretty good, and I haven't spent much time with this printer, so I'm still getting used to its quirks and how it all runs and operates. For using two machines and putting the parts together, everything fit together pretty well. Like, there wasn't any major fitment issues using different filaments and different printers. Okay, so this is ASA, printed on the bamboo. Stock settings, threads look great. The inner threads got a little, uh, the overhangs didn't print the best. Again, stock, you could obviously alter it to get a better, I'd say that's a beautiful print. Okay, bamboo, and then this is the Elegoo. I just automatically raised the bed temp on this one because I knew this one released a little bit. I also did brims.
C looks great as well. This one also had the issue with the inner threads. And there you can see the VFAs on that one are a little worse. But overall, great looking print. Like in person being nitpicky, I think the bamboos looks a little better, but overall on the camera, you can't even tell. And there you can see the VFAs on the Ella Glue are a little worse on the round stuff, but overall, like again, we're nitpicking here. I'd say their bamboo's a little better, but still quite close. Okay, so this is Pet G on the bamboo. This is also my file. Little bit of stringing, but overall, I think that's a good looking print. Here we have the Ella Glue. Again, same settings, same roll. This one does have noticeably more stringing, but you can take that off with the torch. Like side by side, I think the bamboo definitely printed the Ella Glue better, but I, I would, you know, you could just lower the temp, see if it gets rid of that stringing. You could just torch those off. I would say they're pretty comparable. Okay, then we have ABS. What printer do you think printed what? Again, my file. Here, let's look at the inside here. Now, can you guess? So, Elegoo, Bamboo. Again, Bamboo is a slightly better, a little more VFAs on this one. This is ABS, Bamboo, Elegoo. Print times are quite similar. See if you get that bottom to focus. But like the layer lines, the outer walls are super comparable. They printed ABS, great. Top layers could use a little bit of flow work on both, but stock settings, bed temp a little higher, same roll, happy with both. All right, so what do I think of the printer? So initially, I think this thing's been great. Other than a few small complaints, I think it's gonna be a little bit more tinkering than the bamboo, but overall, the little time I spent with it, it's been great. And take this review with a grain of salt, because I've only had this printer for like 100 hours of print time, and in the grand scheme of printers, that's not much. And I bought that bamboo in 2023, I believe, and then Ella Glue did send me this printer to review. And they specifically wanted me to review it against the Bamboo X1C. But that printer's been great and has handled everything I've thrown at it and I've had zero issues since I've had it. This printer's $300 and that printer is $1,200. The bamboo prices are a little steep in general as they kind of always have been compared to other printers. But bamboo kind of set that bar long ago. I personally love my bamboo printers and I look forward to getting the new one to see what that one's all about. I really don't have many complaints because I'm just someone that wants to send files to a printer and it prints. That's pretty much it. I don't really plan on taking these things apart and doing anything crazy with them. I just wanted to print and be reliable. Honestly, when this printer first came out, I was kind of like, why? Like, why did we make another bamboo copy? And then I saw the price was released for the printer and I was like, wow, $300 is a steal. Because I used the printer I used to recommend for an enclosed printer for like under $500 was the Flashforge 5M Pro, but this is even cheaper than that. So for $300, whew. So overall, I do think this is a great printer. If you're looking for a cheap printer to get started with, this thing is awesome. For $300, that's crazy. It prints as good as the bamboo. All the stuff I printed were pretty much stock profiles, so you can also tweak those and make those a little bit better with each filament. Even at the price, I still love the bamboo. They're just great printers, and when you're buying into bamboo, you're kind of buying into the bamboo ecosystem, versus these other cheaper printers have a little bit more freedom with what you can do with them. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope I shed a little light on this printer. Overall, I think it's great. I haven't had it long, so there might be more things I dislike about it. In the future, I can do a follow-up video later, but overall, initial impressions for $300, I think this thing is great. Also, I'm working on a library of files. If you guys are interested in those, we're gonna get those listed on our website and Etsy, so you can check stuff out like this. I'm building up a portfolio, and then I'll get them listed slowly but surely, and then once I get enough, we'll release the thangs and do that whole thing. Bang, thangs, thangs.